Apollo Saturn V will be used for extensive manned space missions, including landing American astronauts on the moon and returning them to Earth. The size and power of this 365 foot high rocket dictated the design of the assembly and launch facilities of the first operational spaceport, NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The spaceport is located on Merritt Island, just across the Banana River from Cape Kennedy. The size of the facilities and equipment dominates the space center. These include the 52-story vehicle assembly building, the launch control center, the mobile launchers, the transporter, the mobile service structure, and the launch pads. Five miles to the south is the industrial area, where a majority of the spaceport's 20,000-man government industry team carry on the numerous activities involved in launching NASA spacecraft. This is the headquarters for the Space Center. From this building, Center Director Dr. Kurt Debus and his staff supervise all NASA launches on Cape Kennedy, as well as the heavy class Apollo Saturn V rockets at the spaceport. The Information Systems Building is the Space Center's memory bank. Its computers and other electronic systems, which monitor, analyze, record, and store information from the launch of every NASA vehicle and its pre-flight tests. The Manned Spacecraft Operations Building is one of the larger facilities. It houses offices, laboratories, and living quarters for the astronauts. In the building's high bay, stages of the Apollo spacecraft and lunar module undergo tests and preparations for flight. These include a computerized acceptance check of the components, leak tests in a huge vacuum chamber which can simulate an altitude of 250,000 feet. Other facilities include the fluid test complex, a series of buildings used to test spacecraft systems which employ toxic or otherwise hazardous fuels. The pyrotechnic installation building, where propellants are loaded on the spacecraft, and the weight and balance of the spacecraft determined, including the astronaut and his personal couch. Space flight missions are rehearsed in the astronaut training facility. An Apollo spacecraft simulator, which can electronically duplicate the entire trip to the moon and back, is used to train the crews for their missions. The lunar module simulator is used to rehearse the moon landing, as well as the astronaut's return trip from the moon to the orbiting command module. Apollo Saturn V stages are manufactured in Louisiana, California, and New York, and delivered to the Kennedy Space Center by barge or air transport. This is the first stage of the Saturn V. 138 feet long and weighing 300,000 pounds, its five engines generate seven and one half million pounds of thrust. The stage is moved into the low bay of the vehicle assembly building. The first stage and the two upper stages of the Saturn V are inspected and prepared for assembly in the low bay. The controlled environment of this building eliminates problems of the past caused by extended exposure of the launch vehicles to wind, rain, and corrosion as they were assembled on the launch pad. Two Apollo Saturn vehicles can be assembled one time in the high bay area. Each high bay is 150 feet wide and 52 stories high. 
the assembly platform for the Apollo Saturn V, is the mobile launcher. The 44-story high tower is movable and serves as the platform from which the Saturn V is launched. The key to the mobile concept of operations at the spaceport is a mammoth tracked vehicle, the transporter. Weighing almost six million pounds, the transporter can lift, balance, and move the 11 million pound mobile launcher. The 450 foot high doors of the vehicle assembly building open to admit the transporter and its towering cargo. Inside the high bay, the launcher is lowered to steel supports and the transporter withdraws. Now the task of erecting and mating the stages of the Saturn V begins. The first stage is lifted over the steel framework of the high bay and lowered to the deck of the mobile launcher. Work platforms, some as large as a three-story building, move out from the walls of the bay and encircle the stage, allowing technicians access to the vehicle. The second and third stages of the Saturn V are next erected. Then the Apollo spacecraft, with its propulsion and lunar modules attached, is mated with the launch vehicle. Finally, the launch escape system is installed to complete the 365-foot rocket. Nine service arms are attached to the vehicle. These arms carry electrical, communication, and fuel lines to the launch vehicle and spacecraft. Throughout assembly, technicians subject the vehicle to electrical and mechanical testing. These tests are monitored by instruments in one of four firing rooms of the launch control center. These instruments remain connected to the Apollo Saturn V from assembly to liftoff and provide constant information to the launch crew about the functional systems of the vehicle. The launch countdown also is conducted from this room. About two weeks before launch, the fully assembled Apollo Saturn V is moved to the launch pad. The three miles are covered at one mile per hour over a specially constructed road. The eight lane wide crawler way supports the 18 million pound load. The transporter's hydraulic leveling system keeps the mobile launcher and vehicle balanced during the five degree climb to the top of the launch pad. When the Apollo Saturn V is in place, the transporter carries the mobile service structure to the launch pad. This 400 foot high tower has five circular platforms which provide access to the vehicle for final pre-launch servicing. When this work is completed, the mobile service structure is moved back to its parking area and the Apollo Saturn V is ready to be launched. When that day comes in 1967, millions will watch the event on television. In the meantime, the public is invited to visit the spaceport. Daily escorted bus tours are provided by NASA. The tours start from an exhibit area at the main gate of the Space Center. Moderate fees are charged to defray operating costs. The tour includes both the spaceport and Cape Kennedy and requires two hours and 15 minutes. On Sundays, visitors may drive through the spaceport in their cars at no charge. For the future, when millions are expected to visit the spaceport, a visitor's information center is under construction. Thus, visitors from throughout the free world may see these facilities of America's spaceport. A scientific center constructed to meet man's greatest challenge, exploration of the moon, the planets, and the space beyond.